Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Vivek. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss a very interesting topic with you that is the ignition system of an IC engine that is internal combustion engine. This is the type of engine that is used inside all the type of automobiles that we see around. All of them are internal combustion engine. So why it is called internal combustion? Because inside this engine, what happens? the air and fuel by air i mean oxygen and fuel is mixed in a proper ratio and then it is combusted at a very high temperature this combustion produces heat energy which is converted into mechanical energy by the engine there are four processes that we call four stroke in an engine that is intake during which an engine intakes the air and fuel inside it okay then there is compression during this cycle what happens the air and fuel is compressed at a very high pressure and at the same time after the air and fuel mixture is completely compressed the spark is generated at the spark plug which ignites the air fuel mixture and this process is just called combustion so this is the third cycle during which the pressurized air fuel mixture is combusted at a very high temperature this combustion is done by a spark plug okay so at the spark plug what happens a spark is generated which burns this air and fuel mixture at a proper temperature and because of that great amount of energy is produced which actually pushes a piston and and this piston helps the engine to crank okay finally the last stage is exhaust during which all the exhaust gases that has been accumulated within the cylinder of the engine is exhausted so these are the four process we are not going to discuss a lot about the engine we are mostly interested into the how spark plug works okay so this spark plug generates the spark and with the system which helps in generating this spark is known as the ignition system as you can understand by the word ignition means it helps into igniting the air fuel mixture within the engine so we will discuss here today a lot of things let's get started but before we begin make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon notification button now before getting started with the ignition system and how it works let's have some basic around the electromagnetic laws clear okay so let me draw a circuit let's say there is a simple circuit like a dc battery and i'm connecting an inductor and a series resistor with this okay it is all connected like this now i am adding a switch here okay let's say normally the switch is in closed position these contacts are closed so what happens simply the battery will provide current which will flow through the inductor and the resistor like this okay so the current flows through the inductor and resistor now what is the emf generated across the inductor if i ask you so what will be the answer that is given by the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction which says that it will be nothing but e equal to l di upon dt that is the emf or the voltage across the inductor is nothing but l times di dt l is the inductance which is directly proportional to the square of the number of turns and di dt indicates the rate of change of current that is the rate at which the current is changing with respect to time now for the time being let us just focus on this di dt okay so what i can uh, conclude from here that the emf generated is directly proportional to the rate of change of current higher the rate of change of current higher will be the emf generated now what is happening let's say this battery was providing 10 amps of current initially okay and the switch is closed and i'm i have closed it for 5 seconds so what will be the change in current di means difference in current how much will be the difference in current because the switch is closed and this is a dc battery so there will be no change in current so i can say there will be zero change in current and how much the time is going so it is five seconds so for five seconds there is no change of current so what is the emf generated it will be zero so that means in a normal situation when current is passing through the inductor a dc current so if there is no change in current there will be no emf generated across the inductor now let us take another case what i am doing now after a certain instant of time let's say at a time t equal to t0 
at a time t equal to t0 i am opening this contact okay so after opening what will happen suddenly the current will go to 0 amps okay so let's say 10 amps of current was flowing and now how much is the change in current 10 minus 0 because the current has gone to 0 how much time it took the current to go from 10 to 0 ampere it is the time taken by the switch to go from on to off position right because when it was in on position the current was going that was 10 amps and now the current that is going is 0 amps after suddenly opening the switch so how much time it takes for the switch to go from on to off position ideally speaking it takes 0 seconds okay because if a switch is on how much time it takes it takes few microseconds but for the sake of simplicity we are considering the switch uh, goes from on to off position in 0 second so what is the net value of di dt it is 10 upon 0 anything divided by 0 is infinity so that means the emf generated across the inductor is infinite what does this mean this means the emf generated across the inductor will be few kilovolts it will be a very high voltage and a spike will be seen in the voltage okay now second thing that is there by Lenz law what do we know that e equal to minus l di dt okay what what does this minus indicate this minus indicates that the emf generated across the inductor is in opposite polarity to that of the source voltage so we can say that source voltage is plus here and minus here okay so ideally speaking the plus should be here for the inductor and minus here but now it is minus here and plus here okay and if an element has polarity opposite to that of source the element behaves as a source itself okay so this inductor now behaves as a voltage source just like the battery now this voltage spike that is there because the voltage is very high what happens because of that see here here there is an open contact because the switch has been opened up right the switch has been opened up so the contact is open now at this open contact what happens as a result this plus is here and minus here for the inductor so because of that the current tries to flow from this direction to this direction right but as the contacts are open so what happens so because of that what happens the infinite voltage appears over this junction okay this open terminal now because of this high voltage what happens dielectric breakdown happens what is dielectric breakdown simply speaking air molecules look like this or any molecule for that sake the nucleus is in the center and the electron revolves around it okay this is the electron it revolves but uh, during dielectric breakdown what happens as the voltage is very high this high voltage causes this electron to get outside of its covalent bond with the nucleus and it behaves like a free electron so there uh, there is a cloud of free electron between the contact points this one and as we all know this electrons behave as charge carriers and because of that the current from one contact to another contact jumps through the air this is called sparking okay that's why you will see that in bigger loads when we turn on or turn off a switch what happens we we can see a spark behind the switch okay so this is the basic thing behind generation of spark using the induction coil or choke okay further what happens as the as the current passing through the inductor is changing so an emf is generated and by Lenz law we know that a magnetic field will be also generated by the inductor so a time varying magnetic field will be generated by the inductor okay that is according to the Lenz law now let us move to the ignition schematic diagram so this what you are seeing on the screen is the schematic diagram of uh, an ignition system few parts that you can see here is a battery key ignition coil ignition cam distributor spark plugs i am coming to how all these things work so here you can see there is a key so what we do is that we are inserting the key which means these two contacts that you can see closes now because of closing of these contacts what happened the current begins to flow from the battery to this coils known as ignition coil this coil this you are seeing this is called primary coil and this is called secondary coil let us for now focus on the primary coil 
so there is a primary coil and now the current begins to flow through the primary coil and through this what called contact breaker okay this is a contact breaker it is a temporary switch so it flows through battery through coil and through the switch to the earth okay normal circuit now from the battery another power goes to the ignition cam okay this keeps on rotating let's say it is rotating in this direction now as you can see the ignition cam rotates and uh, this uh, upper edge that you see on the ignition cam it pushes the contact breaker so as a result what happens the contact opens up okay this opens up in this direction because of the opening of the contact breaker what happens just we saw that uh, if uh, the current is passing through a coil and suddenly a switch opens up so what happens a huge amount of voltage is generated across the inductor so same thing happens at this coil okay now because of uh, the change in current and emf is generated across the primary coil and as emf is generated there is a time varying magnetic field generated okay and by transformer action just as we know by mutual induction what happens the secondary coil links up with the primary one okay now the secondary coil as you can see has a greater number of turns which means whatever the voltage that has been generated here a uh, multiple amount of voltage will be generated by this secondary coil okay this is by the transformer action because the number of turns are greater so ideally uh, what happens the voltage that is generated by the secondary coil is around 22 kV that is 22000 volts okay now this 22000 volt what happens it passes through this line like this okay and it comes here in this pointer known as distributor what is a distributor a distributor is nothing but it just takes care of the timing of the sparking at engine what you can see here is that uh, the the 22000 volt is coming into this pointer it enters here now this pointer that you are seeing it carries 22000 volts it is carrying 22000 volt and uh, there are four contacts here 1 2 3 and 4 all these four contacts as you can see are going to four spark plugs okay these are the spark plugs so when this 22000 volt line that is coming up here comes in close proximity of the spark plug contact here a spark jumps off okay let me show you here a spark jumps off let's say it is here so a spark jumps off why it happens because the air gap is small and for a spark to jump off what is required if i talk about oxygen or if i talk about normal air 30 kV per centimeter this is the dielectric breakdown dielectric strength of air okay it means that if we have two contacts 1 cm apart and we can generate 30000 volts across them then a spark will jump from one contact to the another contact okay but inside an engine the 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 gap is very small it is not 1 cm it is even smaller than that and because of that 22 kV is enough to generate a spark at this contact same thing happens here here and here when the pointer reaches this pointer keeps on rotating in this direction as i have shown in the uh, arrow heads here you can see it keeps on rotating in this direction now so the spark uh, jumps over here and this is spark this causes 22000 volt to pass through this line okay 22000 volt or it it can be near by that because of course the resistance also works here so 22000 volt i am considering here so 22000 volts comes up to the spark plug now in the spark plug you can see these are electrodes okay so these electrodes carry this 22000 volt and as you can see the there is a gap between these two terminals okay here you can see there is a air gap so the next terminal that is there is connected to the earth that is it is connected to the zero volt potential now because of that the upper electrode that is carrying 22000 volt and the lower one is carrying zero volt there is a potential difference of 22000 volt and because of that a spark jumps off at the gap okay a spark generates here this spark is what taken by the air fuel mixture and hence it combusts okay so this is how the combustion inside an ic engine happens 
by the ignition system this is a basic diagram of the ignition system of an ic engine so that's how it all works as you can see this distributed takes care of the timing as i said what uh, why timing is important timing is important because not all the engines require the sparking at all the times not all the cylinders require the sparking at the same time the sparking is required after the compression cycle is completed that is the air fuel mixture is compressed to a higher pressure and there is a higher temperature within the cylinder only after that during the combustion cycle the sparking is required if the sparking is not done at appropriate time the spark will not be generated at the appropriate time and hence the ic engine will not work so this is taken care of by the distributor okay and the spark plug gap that you are seeing here this is very much important this gap should remain uniform why because just now i told you that 30 kilovolt per centimeter 30 kilovolt per centimeter is required now by that you can calculate how much uh, length is required for 22 kilovolt to jump from one point to the another point if there is an alteration of uh, the this gap so what will happen there will be no spark generated at this gap and if the spark is not generated the ic engine will not work at the same time if the gap is too small so what will happen the spark generated will be very severe and it will corrode the this uh, terminal the terminal of the spark plug okay further what you can see here at the contact breaker there is a condenser connected over here why it is connected because if this uh, contact breaker opens up and if there is no capacitor so what will happen the spark that is generated at the contact breaker will corrode the terminals here this terminals and because of that the whole ignition system will be affected so because of that a small condenser is added in parallel to the switch which absorbs the extra shock that is generated by the sudden opening of the contact breaker so in this video i tried to show you a basic working of uh, uh, ignition system of an ic engine and this is the picture of a basic distributor inside an ic engine so i hope this video was helpful for you if you have any question any doubt any query any feedback any suggestion put them in the comment section below all your comments will be highly appreciated thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do press the bell icon notification button to receive the notification of every single video that i am making share this video with your friends this is vivek chaube and i'll see you next time